wait until you see what's going to happen today. Stage one. Well, that's just about it for day one. Oh, it was a hot one. So now it's time to mix this up and start painting. I'll give all of this undercoat a very, very light sand. Well, today is makeover day for Mistress. Wait until you see what's gonna to happen today. This is a game changer. Stage one. Well, that's just about it for day one. Oh, it was a hot one. This is actually shirt number four, a high of 35 degrees Celsius. So warm day and hence the headband, the fan, wristbands, my goodness, trying to keep all that salty water 
off of the sanded surfaces because the salty oily water off your skin is actually a big issue when you get it on surfaces that you want to paint. So what I'll do now, I'll just get the vacuum cleaner, vacuum over everything, put some tape in place for the cutting in and then tomorrow I should be right to get that primer undercoat on. It's actually quite exciting because this is really going to change the look inside of Mistress. And as you've seen, I've taken the cabin sole out and that's so I can just sand down on all of those bulkheads and have a clear sanding surface because of one, rather than muck around trying to sand along the cabin sole, but also all of that I do want to have white so that when you actually look down, all you'll see is white and not another colour down there. And it's sort of interesting because standing here in the bilges, the height of the lining now is just at the end of my fingertips. It feels a bit strange being this low. I am a short ass though. This is a bit of a challenging recording time. We're having a really blustery day today, so you're gonna hear a bit of noise there. I'm now ready to get some paint on all of those areas I've sanded inside a mistress in the saloon area, and man, am I excited about that. As I said before, I think this is gonna be a game changer. So I'm using this wattle product. It's actually an epoxy undercoat can be used as a primer undercoat as well. It's going over the top of the epoxy that I've coated all that plywood with. So compatibility is great. And of course I've sanded all that and roughened it right up so the bond will be good. It should only need one coat, here's hoping. It is a high build undercoat. So I've been told that it goes on well, doesn't sag and very easy to sand later if there's sort of any uneven lumps and bumps. I just thought I'd point out as well, I've got this little homemade mixing stirrer, just for those who might be interested. I just used an Allen key, two nails, bent up that nail of course, and welded them all together. It's proven really, really useful, and I actually made it up to fit inside of the spray gun pot, because the thick primer undercoat that I'm using on Mistress's steelwork really is very thick when you start with and I didn't want to put it in another container and lose a lot in the transfer so I was mixing that up inside the pot. So now it's time to mix this up and start painting.
Just to say a few things in regards to the comments that I do appreciate, as I say in my outtakes, I do enjoy reading what you have to say. So there's a few things that have come up in the last couple of videos that I just thought I'd answer to. First of all, regarding in the last video, the latch for that distribution panel. Dennis made a good comment, as did Morgan as well, about the fact that if mounted in a slightly different way, those latches will work without requiring some sort of spacer behind it like I did. And so there's two really good suggestions there. Dennis, thanks very much. And as you said, if you allow a bit of space with the stop behind where that latch goes and put a bit of foam on the stop, it'll allow that panel to move and flex a little bit into the foam, allowing that latch to lock. And Morgan made a similar sort of comment, although in a different way, which was to put the stops away from where the latch is, again, to allow that panel to flex a little bit. Those two options would have been the perfect way for me to mount those. And so tips for anybody else like Paul, who wants to get those latches and fit them, don't do what I did. And so the next thing was regarding the edges of that aluminium screen, which I'm using for the cabinet doors. Brian and Mike made the comments about that will corrode over time, and I'm well aware of that. So as you'll see ahead, they will be completely bedded into some Fix 15, and so that will protect those edges. The next thing, the crimping tool. Clearly, as I alluded to in that prior video, they were the wrong crimpers. I was pretty confident about that, but just to make the point that yes, you can get jaws which will crimp correctly those MC4 plug end pieces onto the wire, as RL and Ian commented. And the last thing for now is a good comment from Rudolph regarding buying spare parts of things that I'm fitting into Mistress now, mindful of the fact that in the future, these things may well not be manufactured. So he made the comment about the switches on the distribution panel. And in fact, I did buy some spares exactly for that reason. Now, obviously there's a limit. I won't be able to buy at least two of everything, but there's a long list of things that will be worthwhile to buy now so that I've got spares should things fail ahead. And of course, the very thing that you don't get a spare for or that you get one of and not two is likely to be the one that you're going to need. You can't cover every base, but it's worth trying. And the last thing I'll just make mention of is this knee of mine, which is healing very well. The progress is going great. I am still paying attention to that pretty carefully when it comes to doing boat work in Mistress. There are some positions that I just can't and won't get into, mainly regarding bending and flexing the knee beyond about 110 degrees and kneeling on it. I'm very, very careful with those things. I'm still in rehab. I'm following all the rules to the letter and I will continue to do that. But just a comment, it's going well. Back to the boat work. What I'll be doing now I'll give all of this undercoat a very, very light sand with 240 grit just to take off any 
little lumps and bumps. I noticed there are a little bit of the mohair roller threads around the place, but all in all, it's come up really well. So light sand, and then I can get on with the polyurethane top coat. It's been a long time since I've vacuumed the bilges. Top coat time. What I'm using is Waddle's Poly U 400 paint, a polyurethane, the hint's in the name, and I've found this excellent, excellent top coat. It's what I've used on Mistress on the hull with the blue and also the white, both on the bootstripe and on the decks, and I can't believe how durable it is. It just seems excellent. It's got all the promotion for being great with marine application as well. I rate it. This will actually be the first time that I won't be spraying it though, so a little bit different in terms of application. I'll be using the same mohair rollers that I used for that undercoat. I'll put on one coat today and then another coat on 12 hours later tomorrow. Well, hasn't this lightened the inside of Mistress up? And it's a good sign of what will be coming ahead in the next episode. Now what is he up to, you may well wonder. <laughs> Cutting a bit of an inspection hole on this bulkhead. That really is so much better. Can I ask you to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and please check out my website. And of course, leave a comment because I like reading what you have to say.